Welcome back to The Real News Network. We're talking about, is Karl Marx relevant to today? And once again, we're talking about with Leo Panitch, who, whose article in the recent Foreign Policy magazine uh, about the relevancy of Karl Marx to today. Thanks for joining us again, Leo. Leo is a professor of political science at York University in Toronto. Also, he's the author of the book, Renewing Socialism. So, let's talk about some specifics about what relevancy Marx has to, and we're gonna fill in the blank. So let's start with climate change. Uh, the, re the reason I pick climate change is there's a big debate going on in Washington right now and also in Canada on just what are the mechanisms to deal with carbon emissions. And there's this debate between uh, cap and trade, which is to create a market, which you can explain to us more, um, carbon tax or regulation. And, and the Obama administration recently said, and so did the EPA in the United States, say that they're quite wedded to the idea of cap and trade. Mm -hmm and they're not interested in much regulation. Mm -hmm. So what does Marx tell us about this? The relevance of Marx to this issue uh, is limited in some ways because Marx didn't foresee the climate crisis. I think that has to be said. He was, however, very sensitive to the way in which capitalism was feeding off nature, often destroying nature, and destroying the sustenance of human society through the contradictions of, of industrial capitalism. We see it in, in uh, the cap and trade proposal, what Marx was on about, in terms of the attempt to find market solutions, commodified solutions, solutions based on derivatives for uh, the emissions problem. Uh, it's not only a matter of what Obama's putting forward by cap and trade or what's being put forward virtually by you know, every green liberal and for that matter green social democrat in the world today. The Kyoto, whole Kyoto plan is based on precisely a trade in uh, emission standards. And this is the uh, trade in derivatives products. It's the trade in, uh, in a, security, a security that a firm has by virtue of not going over their level, staying under it, okay, which is explain, trade. Explain the basic, because some no, people no, may, not, may not set, know what cap and trade is. The government sets a standard, which is what the cap is. You can't emit over a certain level. Uh, and it will issue a certificate to those firms that don't go over, that stay under. Those firms can then trade those certificates to another firm that goes over. And they use those as in order not to go to jail or pay a penalty. So you get a trade in derivatives products, financial products, uh, that is, of course, it costs them insofar as they have to buy that security, it's costing them something. Uh, but you're getting a trade in derivative products. This is the kind of trade in financial instruments that brought us to this mess. And for us to attempt to resolve the climate crisis uh, by relying on that volatile, open to manipulation and crisis-ridden a mechanism is a disaster. And why people are proposing it is that they're afraid to talk about planning. And you can't really imagine given the seriousness of this crisis, that humanity can solve it without returning to a form of economic planning. We'd like it to be democratic economic planning as opposed to the bureaucratic central planning uh, that we knew. But it's impossible that it can be done through this kind of system. And, and, and this crisis, and Marx would tell you that this crisis produces this. Now, in order to do that, it leads on to the next thing. In order to do that, yes, you probably do have to have a banking system that isn't just regulated, but is a public utility. You know, is a repository of a democratic, accountable state which directs the funds that pass through the banking system in such a way that the climate crisis, the type of production we need in order not to be destroying nature, uh, does in fact happen. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to deal with this. And then it applies thirdly to what's happening to the auto sector and the conversion that ought to be taking place in it. The whole of the parts industry, which is tanking, ought to be taken into public ownership. And all of the enormous skills, the tool and die makers and the machinery that is all now going down the drain, you know, a legacy of generations of training, of engineers, of, of workers, etc., is being dumped. Whereas what we need is to convert that industry into ecologically sustainable types of production. There's no reason that tool and die makers can't be making solar panels. Uh, yeah. But in order to do that, you have to have a banking system that will, be, will lend 
into that conversion. So it is all connected, and you know, one of the, the fifth of the tenths, the fifth of the ten uh, things that Marx called for in the Communist Manifesto was to take the banks into the hands of the state. And you're hearing that now from all kinds of non-Marxist quarters, uh, because in the face of this crisis, it's rational. The uh, talk of anything that suggests taking control of the market or planning, and the auto industry is a good example, where you have a situation where the government's actually going to own, together with the unions, a majority of GM and Chrysler, but they're leaving the present management in place. The union's going to have one board member. When the new president of GM was asked, how are you going to bring GM back, he essentially said, by creating small, stylish cars. Yeah. Uh, in other words, get back to hopefully where they want, were with a little bit, uh, maybe the, the odd battery car thrown in here and there. Yeah. So, but, so, so if, if, if what Marx has to tell us about climate change, banking, and the auto industry requires this kind of planning, American politics is 100 million miles away from 100 that. 100 million miles away in two senses. One is, does the state, after all of these years of atrophying, going back since the Second World War, you know, when the state was highly capable Right, of converting the auto industry into the production of air fuselages. Right? It's no longer the case. It doesn't have that capacity. Uh, so yes, the state would have to be changed, uh, not only so it's democratic, but it has the technical capacity to be able to do this. But then more than this, I mean, Marx was not about offering policy advice to capitalist states. It isn't a matter of bringing this to Obama. He, d he did write a letter congratulating Abraham Lincoln. And well, yes, he was very happy to see slavery uh, undone. But in terms of proposing to existing capitalist governments that they ought to introduce socialism, he wasn't that naive. He was the greater realist. What Marx was about was uh, trying to encourage people to overcome their social isolation which is produced in this market individualist commodified society uh, to create new social identities, new political identities, new collective identities and organizations that express those and undertake a uh, massive social and political transformation. But still, he certainly they put forward and supported demands that led to certain kinds of legislation, whether it was an eight-hour working day or other sorts of things. Yes, but it, those things don't just happen by policy advice. I mean, Marx's main emphasis so was to build movements. To make demands. That, of course, would try to win people to it by making immediate demands. He, you know, he advocated the eight-hour working day. The fundamental resistance to this in, 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 in many countries, but particularly in the United States, which doesn't e have, even have much of a social democratic tradition. I mean, they, they envision uh, some of the Republicans in Congress to, just debating health care. The great Satan right now is Sweden as the, as the socialist menace. Um, yeah, but they aren't getting many votes these days, so maybe that's... Uh, well, but, you're, but you're seeing very similar things within the conservative Democrats. It's mm -hmm. not just the Republicans. Uh, in fact, right now it's possible that the, uh, within the, the conservative Democrats led by Bacchus,